A very warm welcome to you, to my thought for the day, especially to those of you who are new to me. How lovely that you have found me and you join with me. I hope each morning, each morning I, I ask the Lord for something to talk about that will be of an encouragement to you and help you on your journey, on your pilgrimage, walking with the Lord through this difficult and um, troubled world that we live in. And today my thoughts are focused on Luke chapter 15, that wonderful chapter about the things and people that were lost. And I think it's summed up this chapter in, in chapter 19 of Luke and verse 10. For the Son of Man came to seek and to save that which was lost. Now that, that verse comes at the end of the encounter Jesus had with Zacchaeus who was a tax collector and an outcast of his own people and had wandered far from God. But he met Jesus and his life was transformed and he was found. Jesus is in the business of looking for the lost. And in this chapter, chapter 15, there's the story of the lost sheep, the lost coin and the lost son. Some of us know it as the prodigal son, but I think it's it's better to call it the lost son because it's one of three stories all about lost items and things and people. And I was thinking about it. Um, so first of all, there's the story about the sheep. There were a hundred sheep. The shepherd had a hundred sheep and one was missing. And I'm sure he looked after and made sure that the 99 that were not lost <laughs> were safe when he went off to look for the lost one. And I was thinking, that's one in a hundred. And perhaps you think that you're completely insignificant. You're just one in a crowd. You're not special. There's nothing special about you. Perhaps you think, why, why would God... Why would God want me in his kingdom? Why would God love me? You know, if you're, if you're brought up on a farm with sheep, you will recognise each sheep differently. You'll know them. Um, you'll know them by name, probably. But me, I'm a townie. <laughs> well, I've been in the countryside now for 22 years, but um, I, I look at a flock of sheep and unless there's a black lamb, they all look the same to me but to the shepherd, they're individual. And this one in a hundred here tells us that God loves us as individuals, that he knows us through and through. He knows, he knows each one and he seeks each one personally. And you may be one, one in a crowd, but he cares for the one that is lost, the one that is struggling the one that is missing, the one that is unaccounted for. As was said, I'm sure it's been said to you, it's been said over and over again. You know, Jesus' love is very wonderful. And if you or I had been the only person in the world who needed saving, who needed a saviour to die for them, Jesus would have died for you. That's how much he thinks of you. One in a hundred insignificant, no, of infinite importance, worth the life of God's own son, of God himself. It's a mystery. It's beyond finding out. And then there's a little story of the woman who had 10 silver coins and she loses one of them. So one in 10, still not hugely significant, but much more significant perhaps than the one in a hundred. And where the sheep could wander off um, uh, and perhaps know that they were wandering, um, the coin is senseless. It doesn't know it's lost. And there are people who don't know they're lost. There are people who have no concept of anything to do with God. And the Lord loves them as much as he loves the people who know they're lost and wander off. And he will seek, as this woman sought, for the coin that was lost. 
she's got nine. You'd think, isn't she satisfied with nine? No, she's not satisfied until the whole number is brought in. And God is not satisfied until every lost one is found. And then there's the, the lost son, one in two. One in two. And the younger. Now, I don't think they had quite um, the hierarchical system that we have still have in the UK uh, of the old, oldest son inheriting everything and the youngest son uh, getting only uh, partial things. The, the, the older son gets the title. The older son is the more important of the two to the human mind, to the, you know, to the, yeah, it's the hierarchy, isn't it, of our society. And we all know how twisted people's thinking can be if they are the spare. And I don't need to tell you who I'm referring to here. Someone who's been given a great deal of love and 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 has turned against his family because he's the spare, he's the younger son. And our prayer is constantly that he will do as this young lost son did, realise the error of his ways and change his behaviour. This son took half his belonging, half what was owed to him if his father had died I, I, and went off. And the, the difference here is that he had to turn round and come home. He had to repent and come home. He had to realise he'd gone the wrong way. He'd had to realise he was foolish. Why is that important? Because we human beings are different to sheep and coins. We are autonomous. God has given us free will. And God will not usurp our free will. He will not force anyone into his kingdom. But he will woo them. And I believe that the Holy Spirit is the one that prompts the young man to suddenly realise that he could go home, that he could go home and that his father would accept him as a servant if he came with the right attitude. And he turns round and he returns home. And then the important thing about all three parables is the rejoicing. There is huge rejoicing huge rejoicing in God's kingdom in heaven over every single lost person who is found. You, you and I, each of us caused great rejoicing in heaven when we were found, when we were found by the shepherd, when we turned from our wicked ways and we accepted Jesus as saviour and began to follow him. Those are my thoughts about the lost chapter, Luke 15. The Son of Man came to seek and save that which is lost. Have a great day. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye.